Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm Fia Alexander, and I'm representing Ro, who is presenting Katie tonight. So while we might let some other people come in, why don't you put in the chat, which if you don't know where the chat is, there's a bottom panel and a little balloon that says chat. And if you open that, you have the chat. You can put in the chat where you're coming from. We'd love to know where you are, whether it's cold like here tonight or warm like Katie in Florida. Oh, upstate New York, that's very cold here too. <laughs> right. In Hanover, New Hampshire, it's very cold. <laughs> oh, Los Angeles, sunny and warm, okay. Nice. Very nice. Greenfield, Mass. Wow, you're closest to Roe, probably. Ames, Iowa, warmer, but it's been cold. Very nice. And yeah, LA warm. Well, I can't help but envy you all today in LA and Florida. But, well, I will. Uh, introduce Katie now and she can start in her pre presentation. Welcome. We're so happy you're here and we're so excited to have Katie. Katie is a licensed professional counselor and, and an internationally known medical and emotional intuitive with over 30 years of experience. Her book, Heal From Within, An Intuitive Guide to Wellness, will be released really shortly, February 15th by St. Martin's Press. So I think you can go to our website and pre-order it. I saw that correct, Katie? Yes, you can. And you're, you're welcome if you want to, to enter your website into the chat so people could have it, that'd be great. And so we're excited because Katie's coming to us for the first time for Roe. And it's just a taste of a five part series that she's going to be giving. And I will put the link for that in later. And that starts on February 1st. So we hope that you will enjoy the evening and come and do the program too. I'll be there. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So Katie, I'll, I'll turn it over to you now. And Great, thank you. Um, so I recognize some of your names. I'm so excited to see you again. Um, yeah, um, I have not done anything similar to this. I just spoke at at Omega and that was an in-person workshop. So it's really fun to get to reach more people. And I'm excited to teach you some of what I know about intuition, um, connecting to intuition. Um, you know what, I do have a question. You, so this is just me and then, okay, everybody else is still there. Okay, great. Um, so me talking about intuition, um, connecting to intuition, some of the techniques that I used in my own healing and recovery. And these are things that I use during every individual reading, things that actually saved my life. So it's exciting to get to teach them to you. Um, how many people here are at least somewhat familiar with connecting to their intuition? I know it's kind of hard to ask um, if I can't see everybody, but um, What's the best way to ask group questions, Via? If you want to see everybody, you can go on your own view and put it into um, out of speaker view. And you'll still be spotlighted for everybody, but you can see everybody then. Go up to the right hand corner that says view. Yes. Oh, and, and I put it in gallery? On gallery. Oh, okay. So, oh, yay. Okay, great. Okay, that's better. I'm not just talking to my own face. Okay, that's much better. Um, so, how many people? Even though I can't see you by, by show of hands, are at least somewhat familiar with talking to your intuition, kind of, sort of. Okay, cool. So most people here. Um, sorry, my child is. Sorry again. How do I turn off messages? That was my child. Okay, so um, just a ground rule, dear Lord. All right, let me see if I can actually turn off messages. Yes, I can. Sorry, I apologize for that. So just one of the um, one of the ground rules, I'm going to mute people um, just so that dogs and um, other things don't interrupt. And if you have a question, I really want to hear them. I'm excited about your participating. So please write it in the chat. And if it pertains to what we're doing at that moment, 
um, I will answer it. Or if it's something that we can answer later, um, I'll put that off. But I really want to hear what you guys have to say. So um, sorry to have you all muted. So I'll be talking about intuition. I'll be talking a little bit about my own process as a medical intuitive, what medical intuition is and how I use it. Um, I really did hit stop and it's not. Um, let me just message her real quick and tell her that I'm doing something. I really do apologize. I just don't want any more interruptions. Um, all right. I apologize again. So um, I'll be talking about my own process, what I do as a medical, okay. As a medical intuitive, God. <laughs> how many of you have children? <laughs> yeah, okay, so you get it. Um, all right. So um, how many people are familiar with the term medical intuitive? So some people, I know some of you are our clients, some of you have been come to my workshops and so you're a little bit familiar with it. Um, most of the time, a medical intuitive will look inside of someone's body and or energy, and um, they'll be able to tell things like physical symptoms, emotional symptoms, um, life stressors, things that you learned as a child, um, trauma, relationships, career, life purpose, kind of the whole thing. And I really look at the whole person and my goal is a couple of things. It's to try to identify the root causes of whatever's going on with people, if they have any issues or problems, um, and also their strengths so they can build on those um, as they're healing. And then to problem solve about what you can do, um, what you may need help from medical professionals for, things like that. But um, I really try and look at the whole person. And I'm going to be teaching you a couple of things tonight. One is an exercise about connect into intuition, which you can also use to contact people from the other side. Um, you can use it to contact your guides. You can use it to talk to your body. So all different kinds of things. Um, and I'm also going to do a little practice exercise with you about being a medical intuitive. So some of you are familiar with this. Um, when I first learned about medical intuition, I took a weekend workshop and someone said, okay, I'm gonna give you a name and age. And I want you to tell me everything you can about this person or animal or you know, alive or not. And like maybe some of you, I was thinking, I don't know if I can do this. I've never done anything like that before. I don't know if I'm intuitive enough, I, whatever. Um, but we tried the exercise and I was pretty surprised at how much I knew um, about the animal or a person that we were being asked about. So um, kind of as a way of, of jumping into this and just getting you used to what it feels like to, to check in with your intuition, um, I'm gonna give you a name and age and have you use your pen and paper to start with, um, write down everything that you get about this person or animal. Um, and then if you'd write your, uh, what you got in the comments. Um, and don't worry about being wrong. Don't worry about making mistakes. It's all good. Um, and then at the end, I'll tell you about this person um, and see how you all did. But this is not a contest. It's not, you know, no one's going to be like, okay, you got it wrong or anything, because surprisingly, people always get at least a few things about the person. So this person is, her name is Lauren. And she is 30, year old, 30 years old. Um, and it's 7 11. I'll give us to like 7 16. So about five minutes to just kind of write things down, whatever you get. Um, anything, literally anything that comes to you. Don't think anything's <clears throat> unimportant or dumb or just, just write down whatever comes to you. These are just very great answers. These are so detailed. I love how detailed you guys are. Um, so as I'm, re I'm reading this, um, and you guys can see the comments as well. So 
please continue to write your comments and it's okay if you don't wanna share, that's, that's totally fine too. Um, so this person happens to be one of my daughters um, and what's, what's fun about doing this is that I have an idea of her in my head and there's things I know about her. And when I work with other people and you come up with other ideas, it really makes me think. And, and I learn um, about the person I'm talking about as well, because there's things I may not have even considered. Um, she has brown hair. A lot of you mentioned brown or dark hair. Um, she does have a dog. Her dog is like her child. Um, yes, loves dogs. Um, does not have children. Um, she does like working out and she does like reading. Um, she lives in Colorado, um, outside of Denver. Um, she, a few of you mentioned eyesight, um, and she does wear glasses, um, does get headaches sometimes, has, has some anxiety, I got it from her mom. Um, let's see, what else? Um, she is pretty happy. She's really smart. Uh, let's see. She, she is into, she's definitely a free spirit. Um, somebody put running from herself. <laughs> there may be some of that. <laughs> um, thrill seeker and things like that. Um, for sure. Let's see. Um, does have allergies. Um, she is married in a, in a good place. She definitely is questioning her future and what kind of to do and all the different interests. Um, she's a graphic designer. Um, let's see what else. Yep, doesn't have kids. Um, relative of Katie, yes, yes, Kelly, put that, yep. Um, she is somebody put lean boyish physique. She, she is, she's always been that way. Um, she does have freckles. <laughs> she's a lawyer. Well, she could be, <laughs> um, is she a student? She, um, my other daughter's a student. Um, and some of you picked up like when you said pink, um, a few people said pink and, and things like that. Um, my other daughter just dyed her hair pink. Um, and I think when you're a mom, you definitely kind of think of your children, you know, in the same way sometimes. So um, you guys all like everybody got at least a few hits and that's a very cool thing. Um, the reason I jump right into this at the beginning is because first of all, I want you to try and explain or try to experience what it's like to try to tap into your intuition and how difficult it can be. Um, but also that you have more abilities than you realize. So I've been doing this work in some form for about 30 years. For the past around 10 years, I've been a medical and spiritual intuitive more exclusively than, um, than a licensed counselor. And even now with all the readings I've done and the, the work I've done on myself, before I start a reading, um, I always get a little nervous because I wanna do a really good job. And I don't want to, um, you know, do anything that's going to be detrimental. Um, there's always the, you know, having to get it right thing. So if any of you guys were thinking about that during this process, it's normal. Um, can you guys write for me any of the difficulties that you experienced during this process? or any of your feelings at all about the process actually, um, because we're gonna, we can learn from each other. Thinking I was wrong all the time. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, okay. These are all fantastic. I will comment on these because they're great. Mm. Okay. Yeah, those are, they're all great comments. Um, 
one of the things I'm going to do tonight is talk about the obstacles to connecting with intuition, because there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, these are, these are all great. Um, worried about being wrong. Um, felt like I knew her. Hard to clear your mind and just let things come in, for sure. Um, separating my own current health eating feelings within my body with what I was picking up. So what is yours and what is for that other person? Definitely. A lack of confidence. Um, okay, so Heather wrote, I get things visually or as a feeling. So it was hard to know what I was actually seeing, sensing or seeing. Okay, that's a really good point. Um, and I will talk about the different ways that we get intuitive information. Surprised that words and images jumped into my mind, wondering if I was picking up my own stuff, uh, influenced by other people you work with. Yeah. All right. So a lot of similar issues in terms of connecting. Um, I'm gonna, before I teach you my favorite way of connecting with intuition, I wanna explain a little bit about my definition of intuition because it's fairly different from what you may have heard before. And I learned all of this when I was 16. Um, I had a severe eating disorder and depression. I was suicidal. I was done with living. And I knew that if I didn't get better, that I was going to need to end my life or, or get help. And I really believe it was divine intervention that caused me to call our pediatrician without telling my parents, um, told them what I was doing. And he connected me with a therapist. And I was, you know, I was 16. As I said, I had a car I could drive. I got myself there. I didn't even tell them. And it was because of my recovery that I am doing all of the work that I'm doing today. So when I work with people who have serious issues, one of the things we always look into is even though it's really hard, um, what are you learning from it? What can you take from it? Um, a lot of people find that because of getting sick or getting into an accident, that for the first time in their lives, they have to start focusing on themselves and taking care of themselves and they find the courage to say no to things um, or to let other people do them and not be so concerned with having to fix everything. Um, they also find, or I also find that they learn more about spirituality and their intuition and start thinking about what else is there alive? You know, what time have I missed? Um, because their own mortality, um, you know, is right there in front of them and they want to use what time they have left, even though most of the time it's not you know, an illness that's going to kill them, but use the time they have left to live well and to be happy instead of like being in relationships that don't work, for example. So the definition, definition of intuition that I use comes from Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. He's pretty cool to look up. Um, and I see it as this all-knowing force that is part of everyone. It's part of nature. Um, you don't have to be an intuitive or a psychic or have any special abilities to connect with it. And it's something that is always with you, no matter what. It's like this perfect best friend, um, perfect bodyguard. For me, it was kind of like the parents I didn't have. And it loves you and accepts you unconditionally, which is a big deal because a lot of us have never had anything like that. And for me, I didn't know how to find that within myself because I just thought everything was wrong. So I decided to let my intuition, which Carl Jung also called God within, um, to allow it to love me, to allow it to accept me um, in a non-judgmental manner. I always say it's kind of like your pet, like your dog. They don't care what you weigh or what kind of mood you're in or how you did at work that day. Um, they just love you no matter what. And so it's a little bit different way 
of looking at intuition. Um, it is also a way to get guidance. And when you are with it, you're not alone anymore. So you can help have it help you make decisions, which again, a lot of people are afraid of making mistakes. So they can do it in the presence of this non-judgmental loving energy. Um, for those of you who have heard this before, um, in the five part class, we are going to get into this a lot deeper um, and explore it a lot more. So um, thank you for listening again. I think it's always a good reminder. Um, so connecting to intuition. Um, sometimes, so, okay, so not all of us know what our intuition is. Um, so in that case, you might try like connecting to a loved one who has passed, for example. Um, you might try connecting to nature, to mother nature. Um, when I say intuition, I use it interchangeably with guides. So you might try talking to angels, talking to God, if that's kind of, if the term intuition is a little too ambiguous for you. And my favorite technique is to physically write out a question or statement or your feelings and direct it to your intuition. So dear intuition, um, you might say, do you have anything to tell me today? You might ask a question about staying in a job or deciding about a relationship um, or making any decision really. Um, sometimes I use it to see if a certain supplement is going to work for my body. Um, so you can use it for anything that you want. Sometimes I will just start writing. Like if I'm a little bit anxious or there's something kind of on my mind, I'm not really sure what it is. I will just start writing like I'm writing to a friend and just ask for feedback. Those are only a few of the ways that you can use this technique. There's no right or wrong. Sometimes I will write for five minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. Again, there's, there's no right or wrong. It's just up to you. And the ways that people were talking about kind of being visual or getting sensations or things like that. So they're not really sure what to do with that information. And there are a lot of ways of getting intuitive information. Um, one is that you might like hear or feel a word. So you might see the word blonde or anger or something. So sometimes I will see that word like as a visual in front of my face. Um, sometimes I'll just hear the word in my head. Um, you may get pictures. I often get pictures of what someone looks like or a certain scene. Um, if I am contacting people from the other side, I will often see like a black and white picture of them um, almost like they're taking me back in time and showing me a certain period in their life. You may um, hear things in your head. You may get physical sensations of something going on in that person's body. There's, you know, just a ton of different ways and none are wrong and none is right. It just is kind of what's comfortable to you. And the more that you are open to receiving intuitive information, um, the more ways your intuitive, your intuition will show you the information. So it's just kind of about trusting it. Um, a lot of you mentioned not feeling secure, not feeling confident about what you were listening to. Um, I am going to, you, you can write these things down if you want, um, but there's a lot of obstacles for connecting to intuition. Um, so I'll just tell you about a few of them. Um, one is, like I said, it's the self-doubt. You know, is this right? Um, what if I tell someone something and it's not true? Um, what if, um, what if I'm picking up something from myself instead of for that person? Um, you know, I've never done this before. So how do I even know if what I'm hearing is my intuition or not? Um, why does this just sound like my own voice? You know, why am I not seeing angels and fireworks going off? And, you know, is this real? Um, is this just what I want to hear? So it could be like you want it, you are asking about a certain thing and you're very invested in it. You think, 
I'm just telling myself what will make me feel more confident. Um, attempting to control the message you receive kind of goes along with that. And it's being so invested in your answer or so fearful of hearing an answer that will disappoint you that it's very hard to be open to the information. Um, sometimes people ask questions like about the future, like trying to use it as a almost a psychic thing, like when will I meet my soulmate or um, where am I going to move to or what is my life purpose? Um, I find it's best if you don't use it as a, as a psychic type thing, as a predictor type thing, um, because it's really more for getting information for yourself um, rather than like a tarot card situation or something like that. Um, also asking questions that are too broad, make it really hard for your intu intuition to give you information. So maybe like um, instead of when will I meet my soulmate, um, maybe things like, how can I, how can I help myself to be better prepared to meet somebody I love or to find love or what work do I need to do on myself to help me to find a loving relationship? Um, so things like that. Um, what else? So, oh, this is a big one. Oftentimes we know what we need to do. We are sort of in tune with our intuition or our intuition tells us something and we kind of know like, yeah, I'm in a bad relationship. I need to get out of it or this job sucks and it's time that I get out or, but you're afraid or you don't think that you have those options. And if we, we think that if we allow our intuition, we immediately have to act on it. And that goes along with feelings too, because when you are talking to your intuition, you're also admitting to feelings you have and you're connecting with things that might be painful. So what I always tell people is listen first. If your intuition says, um, yeah, you know you've been unhappy with this guy or this girl for years and you've been putting it off and you know it's time to really make some changes. Um, you might not be ready to do that and, and that's okay. So be open to whatever you receive knowing that you don't have to act on it. It's your choice. You know, you're the one in control of this. Uh, what else? So some people talked about um, their own feelings or people that they knew getting in the way. If I try and do a reading when I'm feeling anxious, I'm going to be distracted. I'm not going to be able to focus. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my process in a minute, but when I go to start a reading, I always just draw like a, these cards, I draw a, oh, sorry, an Oracle card first. This is one of the decks that I use. And it just kind of gets me out of my own head. I just ask for a card that is going to help guide me in the direction of what I can do to help the person. Um, and it just gives me kind of a starting point and and I go from there. So sometimes people um, meditate before. Um, sometimes I take a walk. Sometimes, you know, you do something relaxing, but something that's going to kind of get you out of your own head um, and allow the intuitive information to flow. Um, okay, so let me, before I go on, let me just ask a couple, answer a couple of questions. Um, what do you do with the writings? Do you destroy them later? Um, you, sometimes I write on a napkin in my car. It doesn't really matter what you write on. It doesn't matter if you keep them or don't keep them. You can, if you want. I rarely go back and reread it. Most of the time I get the answer or the feedback that I need at the time. So I don't really need to go revisit it, but it's totally up to you. You can keep a journal if you want. Um, you can keep them. You don't have to, it's totally up to you. Sometimes people feel like they're afraid that somebody's going to read it. So they want to destroy it. And that's, you know, it's totally up to you. Um, and somebody asked about a recording. Yes, this is, this is going to be recorded. So if you can't stay for the whole thing or um, whatever, you can watch us at a later date. So, um, so 
a little, let's, let's see what time it is. Um, it's been a little over a half hour. Do you want to take a little bathroom break or are you guys, you guys good? Yes? Oh, you, oh, you're good. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Um, so people always ask me what I do, how I do, and how I got into it. From a young child, I was always able to pick up on people's energy. Um, I was an empath, which a lot of you are, meaning that I could pick up on other people's energies and their feelings. Um, I was really sensitive and I didn't know what it all meant. I just knew that sometimes it was scary and it made me feel really uncomfortable. So I pushed down the feelings I had, especially when I would often connect to negative forces um, and what I felt were kind of like evil spirits at the time. Um, that was all really uncomfortable. Um, saying that another reason that people are sometimes reluctant to connect to intuition is because they're afraid they're good, that they're going to connect to negative or evil entities. So I was afraid of that for a long time. And what I can tell you is that you and you alone are in control of your energy. And if you are in a place of love, then intuition is pure love. It's connected with God and you don't have to worry about that. Um, we will talk about letting, letting go of other people's energy for sure. Um, so I've heard this from clients before, you know, they're like, I've been taught that this stuff um, is against the church, or I've been taught that it's evil, or I've been taught that I shouldn't do it. Um, but I really feel like it's good and like it's okay, you know? Um, so I would not worry about connecting to anything negative. If you ever do feel like, for whatever reason, things feel a little negative, just tell it to go away. Just say, I'm not participating. I'm all love. Go away. Um, recovered from, well, started my recovery from eating disorder at 16. That was huge because it taught me about self-love. It taught me how to connect to intuition. Through the intuition is how I learned to heal um, and how I learned that we're all connected and that we're here to help each other. So I knew that getting bulimia was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it helped me to grow and to learn about who I was. It helped me to disconnect from my dysfunctional family. And it helped me to find the self-love that I never would have found otherwise. It also motivated me to become a therapist. So went into therapy, got my master's. And I, as I was working with clients, um, I started to accidentally channel their relatives who had passed during the sessions. And that definitely freaked me out, but I realized that my abilities that I've been trying to push down are not going away. So I had better learn about them and come to terms with them. And a lot of the people that I work with, people come to me for all different things, whether it's illness or whether it's wanting to know about their life purpose or improve relationships or their career or whatever. But a lot of people, talk to me about feeling intuitive and feeling like they have these psychic abilities and they haven't had anyone to talk to about it. So they're afraid to talk about it. Um, they're afraid, they really want to use it. Like they almost feel like they could have a career doing it or they could do readings for people or whatever, but they're really hesitant and they're really afraid. And they're like, what if, you know, I'm not you, they say. I don't have your abilities. Um, well, that's totally okay because I'm just a regular person. Um, I happen to do this for a living, but I'm just a regular person and you guys all might have more abilities than I do. You just haven't practiced or haven't worked with it or haven't even given yourself a chance. So if I am teaching people to trust their intuition, then I'm doing my job because I don't ever want you to substitute mine for yours. Um, so back to my, my learning process. So I figured out I needed to 
learn more about my intuition. And I found out about a spiritualist church. Has anyone, have you guys ever heard of a spiritualist church before? So if you have not, um, there's a lot of them in the Northeast. Um, and they're a church in the sense of people gathering together. Um, they're not really a typical religion as you'd think of religion, but it is a gathering of people who have a similar viewpoint. And that is treat people the way you wanna be treated. And that when we die, we don't just go away. Um, you can communicate with people who have passed, you can get messages from them and you're capable of receiving um, and learning how to be a medium as well. Like during the service, there's actually medium readings and hands-on healings. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to check out a spiritualist church, kind of Google like spiritualist church um, and see what comes up. There's um, like national organizations that regulate some of them, not all of them, but there's a lot of, a lot of good ones and just kind of try it out and see what you think. There's no obligation to join or anything, but you might find that it's a comfortable place for you. And they also have workshops on being a medium. Um, and connecting with guides and all that kind of stuff. And usually the, the uh, workshops are really reasonably priced. So found a, found a spiritualist church and joined that and started taking classes and learning more about my abilities um, and finding out that I could do a lot of the stuff that I didn't know I could do and learned from some people who had been doing it for a lot longer than I have. So did that for a while. Um, then a tragic thing happened, which made me rethink my life and realize that I had to do more than what I was doing. And my mom got sick. Um, she was paralyzed by a flu shot and she was, stayed paralyzed for about 10 years. I was her caretaker. Um, and then she died, she ended up dying at the end of that. So this is not a commentary on vaccines. It's just something that happened to my mom. Um, and it's something that really changed my life because if any of you guys know, being caretakers for parents um, or people you love is incredibly stressful. It causes all sorts of family strife and money problems and all that great stuff. So it, it, really, it really changed who I was and it made me think about what I wanted to do going forward. So another example of a tragedy turning into something positive. Um, I took a class in medical intuition, realized I can do it, and this is my thing. So um, the way that I work is really different from the way that other medical intuitives work. And I first I get someone's name and age. Um, I will just concentrate on that. I don't get any more information about them. I don't get pictures or anything like that. And from that, I create a four page report that's very, very detailed and it's based on the chakras. So some of you may or may not know what chakras are, but chakras are energy systems in the body. And they each have their own set of emotional and physical characteristics. So I would like to share, oh, what's the best way to do this? Um, yeah, I think for purposes of explanation, um, I am going to share my screen and just show you what the chakras are and what they mean so that, um, you can use them in your own readings if you choose to do this work. Um, and also to, to figure out your own body issues. So let me, oh wait, okay, hold on. Share screen, share screen, share screen. Okay, cool. So let me go to, okay, here we go. All right, now I'm gonna blow this up. Um, all right, you guys cannot see this. Okay, can everybody see that fairly? Well, kind of, okay. Don't, all right, so there's four columns here as you can see. Under emotional and physical, it says, it'll give you the name of the chakras. Um, 
those are the general descriptions for each chakra. Do not worry about the paragraph that is next to that description. Um, it's an example of what I got for somebody I was working with, but don't worry about that. I just want to tell you guys more about the chakras. Um, the more you know about the energy centers, the more you can learn about your own issues and the things like root causes and things that you can do about them. So if you want, um, I'll, I'll read these quickly and then see if you guys have questions. Um, in the five part workshop, I will be giving out tons of handouts. So you will get a copy of this. Um, but if you are not able to take the workshop for some reason, and you'd like me to send you a copy of this, you are welcome to contact me through row or send me an email through my website or something like that. And I'm happy to send it to you. Um, so the seventh chakra is at the top of the head. And emotionally, it's about the purpose in life and your relationship with spirit. Um, physically, it's about life-threatening illnesses, chronic illnesses, brain and nervous system. So when I start a reading, I start with the seventh because it's an overview of the person. And when you were doing your own little mini readings, um, some of you may have started by getting just kind of an overview of, of Lauren, you know, what kind of maybe her overall characteristics or overall mood or, or that sort of thing. So it's just kind of a good place to start. Um, so the sixth is about, it's in your third eye. So it's about psychic ability, um, perception, and then it's anything having to do with the head, nose, ears, uh, mood, that sort of thing. Um, fifth chakra about self-expression and well, that's in your throat. So if you think about what happens in your throat, it's how you, it's your, your words, your mouth, your neck. Um, any kind of self-expression. Um, if you have a thyroid issue, if you have trouble with your neck or shoulders, or if you grind your teeth, um, anything like that, you may have challenges expressing yourself. That's how symptoms often come out in, um, or our, our emotional and physical issues sometimes come out in our, our symptoms. Like there's a reason. Symptoms are not an accident. Okay. Um, so, so fourth chakra that has to do, it's in the heart, um, that has to do with emotions, um, trust issues, um, asking for help, giving help, being sensitive, being an empath. Those are some of the things that come up here. Physically, it's like heart, lungs, blood pressure, cholesterol, breasts. Oftentimes when, um, I work with somebody who has fourth chakra issues. They're very sensitive. They're empaths. Um, they, they love a lot. It's hard for them to, to set boundaries between themselves and other people. They may give too much of themselves, um, those kinds of things. And I'm just gonna go over these quickly and then after we can do questions about this. Um, so third chakra is about, it's in the gut area, um, the solar plexus in the gut. And a lot of the time in our guts, we pick up emotions of our own in other people. So it's not uncommon if you feel anxious to get diarrhea or you know, um, get acid reflux if you're upset or an ulcer or, or that sort of thing. So um, emotionally, it's about self-esteem and caring for yourself. So people who might be perfectionists, um, who have, who can be really hard on themselves, um, who don't feel secure, who compare themselves to others a lot, they may have issues in the third chakra. And physically it's the gut, intestine, um, addictions, adrenals, hormones, liver, those sorts of things. Um, so second is in, kind of your, your hip genital area, um, about balancing relationships versus money, 
creativity, um, physically it's reproductive organs, bladder, large intestine, lower back. It is not uncommon for me to work with people who had um, either sexual abuse or sexual trauma or who have um, sexual identity issues or who have been put down for their sexuality in some way to have issues in the second chakra. So things like um, you know, fibroids or endometriosis or back pain or um, prostate stuff, not to leave the men out here, um, that is often related to our relationships and earlier traumas having to do with relationships. And then the first chakra, um, so first chakra is in the root and it's in the base of your spine. Um, so it has to do with family issues, belonging, trust, safety, and security, basic needs. It's not uncommon for many people, especially if you've grown up in a dysfunctional family um, or have trauma in your early life to have issues in the first chakra. And that has to do with blood, joints, um, immune system, skin allergies, autoimmune disorders, um, things that kind of impact the whole body and like immune, um, autoimmune disorders are really our body fighting against itself. So all of these things are super symbolic. And that's why I wanted to show you this list. Um, so I'm gonna take that off this top share. And um, who has questions about what I just talked about? Any questions at all? And you can even ask me something about, if it's really brief and I can answer it quickly, you can even ask something about like an issue that you're having. Or if you're maybe, okay, chronic, chronic sinus issues. All right. So the sinuses have to do with the sixth chakra because it's in your head and your nose. Um, what I would look at for root causes could be, so I'm, I'm hearing like mold. Look at the things in your environment that you may be exposed to that are irritating your sinuses. Um, so it could be things like mold pollution. Um, mold is a really interesting issue because we don't always see it and it's often hidden or it could be at our workplace or it could be in the air. Like I live in Florida and mold's freaking everywhere. So it can be in areas where you're not really sure about. Um, but there are ways if you go to naturopaths or people like that, that they can test for levels of, levels of mold in your body. And mold has a host of symptoms that impact everything, literally everything. Um, let's go here. Okay. So um, also, if you think about the sinuses, um, it's about breathing. And in order to be able to breathe clearly in and out, um, which means to relax, if our nose is blocked, we have to breathe in and out through our mouths. So it kind of, it blocks our ability to relax. Um, so it can have some relationship with anxiety as well. I'm just gonna like do a little quickie overview because a lot of people ask questions, so, and that's okay. Um, also look at um, physical issues in your nose. Like, I feel like you may have, um, what is that called? Uh, where one side of your nose is tilted the other way. Um, someone help me, what is that called in your nose? Um, deviated septum, thank you very much. Okay, so look at those kind of issues. Um, and there are a lot of things you can do preventively for, for sinus issues too. So um, are there certain things to look for? Chronic information flowing up physically and in blood tests. That is a really loaded question. There's so many things um, that you can look at to investigate inflammation. Um, it's probably more that I can handle here, but um, 
yeah, it's, it's probably more than I can handle here, but there are blood tests that sort of kind of identify it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that one. Um, colon pain, constipation. So that is about your second chakra. Um, if we are not expressing our emotions, things can get stuck. If we're not allowing our feelings, things could get stuck. And that could be some of the emotional reason for constipation. Um, there's a supplement called chlorella. And chlorella is one of my favorites for doing a light cleansing and also to help with constipation and just kind of helping things flow through. Um, so hip would be second chakra. Answer that question. Um, okay, so more about my process. So once they, I do the report um, and then I create a symbolic painting. That's just one example. This was another example. Sometimes they are animals. So the, the paintings are done very symbolically. Um, I put down someone's name, I listen to my guides and they tell me to start with a certain color. I'll start with that color and they just kind of tell me what to do from there. And part of the five part workshop will be teaching people how to create these paintings for themselves. And then I will be doing an individual interpretations for you also on your painting. Um, so I send the report and I send the painting to the client. They look them over. Um, we meet for an hour, we go over the whole thing. I get more information from my guides during the process. We talk about the root causes to what's going on in their life. We talk about strengths. Um, any questions they have, they get to ask. So it's, there's not just one topic. It's not just what I want to talk about, what my guys talked about. It's what, you know, people contact me for. Um, we talked about, talk about connecting to intuition. If people have any physical things that they need help with, I have people that I refer to. Um, and if people have questions about the reading, they can ask them at no charge afterwards as well. So that's a kind of an overview of, of what I do. Um, so let's see. No questions, okay. Um, okay, this is actually a really great one. Somebody wrote, what about many of us who have issues everywhere, severe or not, deciding how and where to start? This is where intuition really comes in because whether you think about it or not or realize it or not, you all do medical intuition every day. Whether it's on yourself or on your children, you are using medical intuition every day. And what I mean are things like you have a headache or you have a stuffy nose and you first you have to have to ask yourself, you know, do I need to rest? What is this? Um, is this severe enough that I need to take something or do I need to see a doctor or, um, you know, even now with COVID, right? Everyone is like, I get a sniffle. Do I have COVID? And then the anxiety starts and it's really hard to relax and kind of focus on um, anything because you're so worried about getting COVID. So, and even with your kids, you know, I know with my kids, I knew when they had an, an ear infection. Um, I knew when I had to take them to the doctor or when we could wait it out and when they just needed to rest. So you are constantly tuning into your bodies, whether you realize it or not, and you've been doing it your whole lives. So that's really important to remember. And it's also important to be open to the information that you receive from your body. So especially like COVID is a great example. Um, our natural response when we don't feel good is to push it down. Just, I'll be fine. I have to go to work or I don't feel like resting or whatever, but I just, you know, I have to get through this somehow. Um, so try not to be afraid of your body and your symptoms. Um, oftentimes we walk around not connected to our bodies and we're kind of in our heads. 
we're not very grounded. And being grounded means being present, um, being able to feel things, um, being able to live now rather than in the past or in the future. If you have been through trauma, um, if you have an illness, if you're in pain in, in any way, um, if you are feeling anxiety, anything like that, being in your body is not comfortable. It's, the natural thing is to avoid it. And that's what we learn when we're young. So it takes a lot of courage to be in our bodies and to feel that physical or emotional pain. If we're not in our bodies, we can't feel anything. You can't feel your feelings. You can't physical, feel your physical stuff. You can't get information from your intuition. So being grounded and present is really essential. Um, how, well also I will say, if you are an empath, empaths are very used to tuning into other people's energies and not their own. So if you are tuned into what your husband is doing or your kids, or you're really worried about them, um, or you were taught to do it at a young age because maybe you grew up in a family um, with someone who was an alcoholic and you had to kind of always anticipate what they were gonna do in order to keep yourself protected. Um, you learn that your feelings and your identity and your authenticity doesn't really matter and that your feelings don't really matter. So again, it's a lot of out of body stuff, um, I think. We're a very out of body, non-grounded society, unfortunately. And we're all afraid of pain instead of dealing with it and facing it. Um, so one of the ways that I like to use that written technique is to talk to your body, to be in your body. Um, you can do things like write to your body in general, let's say, um, you aren't really happy with your body because you don't like the way it looks. Um, you're treating it as an enemy. Try writing to it as your friend, or you have a symptom that you hate. Um, you know, you, your sinuses are always stuffed or you can't breathe or your hips hurt or you're inflamed or whatever. Try writing to those symptoms in your body like it's your friend. So say things like, um, why are you here? Um, what can you do to, what can I do to help you heal? Um, what are you trying to teach me? How am I not being authentic? You know, what would you like me to know is a good one. Um, I had a client who was having trouble with insomnia. He was waking up in the middle of the night and that wasn't normal for him. So he'd get up and watch Netflix and read. And he decided to write to his insomnia. And so he said to the insomnia, hi, like, I really need to sleep. You know, can you please go away? And his insomnia said, you're welcome. And he said, well, no, like, I actually really need to sleep. Like, this is annoying. I seriously, this is not working for me. So his insomnia wrote back, well, you've been saying that you need to take more time to rest and to catch up on your shows and to do your reading. And you haven't been doing that. So I'm making time in the middle of the night to get your attention. So um, yeah, it's a good example. Um, when I had the eating disorder, I wrote to it like it was my friend. And I said, why are you here? What do you need me to know? Um, why are you tormenting me? I sometimes asked, um, but it was very much, you know, what am I supposed to be getting out of this experience? Um, how can I not be afraid? How can I listen to you and not have fear? So it was a lot of, you know, those kind of things that I really suggest you trying um, and using. So thank you, I'm very accurate. Um, how about, it's eight o'clock, do you guys wanna take bathroom or anything, break for a minute? Then we'll come back and like, I don't know, like, is 10 minutes too long? Yeah, like five minutes? Five. Okay, cool. Awesome. 
So it's 8.06, so like, you know, 8.11-ish. Thank you guys for listening and being here and stuff. I really, really, really appreciate it. And for people who don't go anywhere, I can unmute you and you, you can talk to me. Um, let's see, how can I? I just did it. Yay, okay, good. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Leslie. You guys are unmuted. You can talk now. Oh, unmuted. hi, Katie. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Katie. Hi, Kelly and, and Monica and all you guys, lovely people that I know. Um, <laughs> it's really nice to see you. This is great. So how did you um, develop <coughs> your particular thing with not having a picture and like writing the whole report without any other information? How do I do it? How did you develop that? Like you oh. said that's different from other medical intuitives. Yeah, so um, I wanted something that people could have in writing. Like a lot of times people have to take a lot of notes and I think that's really distracting. So I wanted to, first of all, give someone that they, give someone something that they actually, you know, had in writing that they could work from. Um, and the way that I work, like I can do sort of on cue, readings as well. Um, but I prefer to take time by myself and let that information come to me and then um, without interruption. Um, and then I can kind of put it all together. And then like, even during the sessions, I still get information from my guides. So it's still a work in progress, but um, I don't know if it's my background as a teacher. Um, you know, I'm not really sure, but um, the person that I took the first class from, she worked a lot with chakras. And so I kind of turned it into my own template to work from, if you will. And then um, I'm also an artist and I do watercolors and I don't know what made me think of doing the paintings, but I wanted to add a symbolic, um, symbolic part of the readings because with the words, as you guys figured out, um, with the words as a human, you can get in the way of them. You, you know, you, you hear something as a human, you automatically interpret it a certain way. Um, and so with the symbolism, I just let it flow. And then I figure out what it means kind of while I'm working with the person, while I'm meeting with them and afterwards. And um, it just, it gives me more information and different information and validates what, you know, what I put in the report too. Thank you. You're welcome. You hey, Katie, welcome. can I ask a question? Please. So I typed this in the chat too, but I'm just curious. I know I'm, I'm not the only person dealing with this, but long COVID and long COVID PTSD, <laughs> like post COVID PTSD. I know it's really, COVID's such a bizarre animal because um, it really affects everybody so differently. And especially, you know, the, the PTSD factor as well. Um, because even if you, like we've talked about it's all of the news, even if you get vaccinated, you know, you could still get the Omicron or you could still like, it's a really hard thing. There's no exact science, you know? Um, so, I mean, it's sort of like what I would tell anybody with a long-term virus or anything like that, that spiritually listen to how it has, think about how it has changed your life. Um, think about, for a lot of people, they get sick and they realize they really have needed to rest or mm -hmm. needed to stop doing some of the things that they were doing before. Um, they um, weren't listening to their body or their intuition talking to them. So they get kicked in the ass and they have to stay in bed for a while. Um, that is often what I find um, with people who get sick in general, but, um, and even things like, like COVID, um, I've had people who got it and then it gave them so much time just with themselves. And they realized, I guess, which is happening a lot of people, I don't want to stay in this job, you know, or I want to do something else or, or I want to do something spiritual or health related. I've learned so much about this now that I want to change my life. Um, so think about those types of things 
um, while you are just treating your body as well as possible. Um, you know, take your the vitamin D and eat as healthy as you can and try to get outside and get some exercise. And um, yeah, I don't, there are things like supplements that are helpful for the immune system as well, um, but you don't want to overload yourself with supplements either. Um, right. You know, so um, I'm doing all the things and I'm doing acupuncture. Oh, cool. But I can definitely say that the virus itself had a very negative energy that I never felt from another illness. Interesting. And it's definitely forced me to look at and reevaluate a lot of stuff. But this has been a really long process because I got it in March. And so I'm like nine months into oh. you know, still trying to get fully back to normal. Wow. A lot better, but <laughs> no, I'm really sorry. That's awful. That is actually, yeah, that's really awful. Um, yeah, I mean, we can. Um, I'm trying to think. I wrote down some stuff that I wanted to work with you guys with, um, but let's see. Um, I'm like, sorry. yeah. Yeah. The, the break is over. Do you want oh, yes. to remain unmuted, have the ability to unmute and interact more, or do you want to go back to not having people unmute? Um, I don't know. I kind of like you guys interacting. What do you think? It's up to you completely. Yeah, I think we'll we'll have people because I was more concerned with like dogs barking or stuff like that, but um you know, people can mute themselves if that's an issue at their home. People who have like a million lovely dogs. <laughs> yes, hello, Leslie. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd actually, I think it's cool that you guys can interact and, and ask questions. Um, I'm never, I guess when I do things like this, you know, for the five part one, I have, it's pretty planned out. Um, but for something like this, I always really wanna hear from you guys and would love to know what you want me to talk more about. Um, one thing I can talk about is ways to grow your intuition and, and psychic abilities even more and, and how, to, um, how to talk to people from the other side. Would something like that be cool? Um, and I'm open to any suggestions you guys have too. So, yeah. Talking to other people, talking to the other side. Okay. So I am also a medium. I can talk to people from the other side. Now, the thing to remember that's the most important is your loved ones want to talk to you a lot more than they want to talk to a medium, to a stranger. We don't give ourselves credit because we think you have to be a medium. And we don't realize that our loved ones are with us all the time. We all have an army of guides and angels and loved ones looking out for us. And if you look back on your life and think about the difficult times and how you survived them and how things seemed like an accident, maybe and weren't, and how you were protected. And those are all the times that your loved ones or your guides or angels have been there for you. A lot of us are control freaks. Um, we learn to be that way. We learn to be that way because things are out of control in our lives or we grew up in situations where things were out of control. So we grew up not being able to trust spirit or trust life or trust the universe. And we think we always have to be on top of things. It's normal, but it's really exhausting. So to let that go and allow spirit, allow your loved ones things to be a part of your life and take care of you is very freeing and very empowering. Um, The written technique for that I taught you about writing to your intuition, um, write to your loved ones. 
they will write back to you, allow them to write back to you. Don't worry about if it's real, if it's something you've created, if you just wanna hear it, um, it is real. They can hear you, they can feel your thoughts. When you hear things back to them in your head, that is real. When you have dreams about them and they're in that dream and it feels very real, um, that, that is real, they are with you. So it's one of the reasons why I encourage people to try and find a spiritualist church or even visit the churches online. They have um, you know, the, the uh, services online now. So you don't have to be near a spiritualist church, but they really encourage you to know and to talk to people um, who have passed, you know, that they're still there. Um, so it's, it gives you a lot of support in thinking that way. Um, one thing that I like to do is suggest that people put up, if they don't already, um, put up a picture of their loved ones that they really like and have it somewhere they can see it all the time and talk to the picture. Sometimes it helps to have that visual. Um, ask them to send you things like songs or numbers. People get numbers sometimes. Um, butterflies are really common. Um, you know, anything, anything like that. Um, they will give you signals. You just have to be, you don't have to, but I suggest that you be open to them without judgment. Um, you certainly can go to mediums. There are different kinds of mediumship. My favorite kind of mediumship is evidential mediumship. And it's partly why I work the way I do as well, because what I mean by that is that your loved ones or spirit or whatever will give you evidence that you are actually communicating with them or with spirit. So when I do my reports, the information is very, very detailed. And I will often get things about um, trauma or relationships or things that these people have never told anyone. And it's because their guides, their spirit, whatever, want them to know that this is real and that there's actually a connection. So if you do see a medium, um, I would encourage it to be an evidential medium so that they give you real facts and let you know that the person's there rather than you giving them information first. Um, but yeah, even like sometimes people find it easier to connect to intuition or their loved ones in nature in a place where there's not so many distractions of just day to day, what am I gonna have for dinner? You know, so put yourself in a quiet place um, meditation can be wonderful. Not everyone can do it. One of the things I love about the written technique is that it becomes a mindfulness meditation. You have to stop what you're doing to write. You have to be present. It really focuses you in on that activity and the words and what you're hearing and what you're receiving and what you're saying. So that is my meditation most of the time. I don't have a very easy time quieting this brain. So for me to, um, to meditate, I often just will you know, write to my guides or write to spirit and find out what I need to know for that day or whatever they want to tell me. So what if, what if you do not want your relatives around you? <laughs> okay, so that's kind of fantastic. Um, yeah, I have a few that I would like not to visit me. Um, this is a really important thing. People often feel like they are vulnerable, that if there is negative energy around, um, if there's negative people around, if there's negative spirits, for lack of a better thing to call them, um, that they are vulnerable. I've learned a really important thing. You are in control of your energy, you and you alone. If you do not want negative energy around you, negative people, whatever, and you feel them, just tell it to go. When I was young and picked up on very scary negative energy, which I thought was coming from our old house, turned out it was coming from my father, 
she's not a nice person. Um, that stopped me from wanting to connect to my intuition and being my true self and learning more about my gifts. And fear is a tool that negativity uses. Once I learned that I didn't have to be afraid and that I was in control and that no one could hurt me, everything changed. And I was able to listen to my intuition and learn more about my spiritual and psychic gifts and didn't have that fear blocking it. So that's something, you know, you are empowered. And that's something to, that's really important to remember. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So um, how you have grown as an intuitive, how you've witnessed, witnessed your skill develop. Okay, so this is important for you guys too. Um, when I first started, I didn't feel like I could do anything. I didn't feel like I really, I didn't trust it. I was just like, I can't really do this, you know, and especially the thought of doing readings for other people, that was terrifying. Cause I'm like, I'm not gonna know how to do this. I'm gonna make tons of mistakes. It's just not gonna work. Like I'm gonna look like an idiot. Um, yeah. And the major thing to know when you are connecting to intuition, whether it's for yourself or others, because I know some people definitely work with other people, um, is to have confidence. Now, what I mean by that is, know that you are getting the information you're getting for a reason. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was doing a reading on a 12 year old girl and I heard something about teeth enamel. So my humanness thought, oh, she must have a lot of cavities. Well, I know enough now to just write teeth enamel, just write what you hear or have it register, just do what you hear instead of trying to interpret it, even though it's really hard. So I wrote teeth enamel. When I met with her mom, her mom said, um, yeah, she has extraordinarily strong tooth enamel and has never had a cavity in 12 years. If I had written down what my human thought was, which is that she had a lot of cavities, I would have technically been wrong. So just be open to whatever information you get. The more you do it, the more you practice. When I first started out, I just practiced a ton. I was just like, hey, can I, I'm just learning this. Can I practice on you? Can I practice on, you know, your mom who's passed? Can I use you as a guinea pig? Um, I practiced a lot. And the more I did it, the more I was comfortable with allowing that information. And also being comfortable with how it came into my body um, and my energy field. So even now, if I'm doing, you know, doing a report, getting ready to do a reading, um, sometimes I feel really connected to the person and I'm like, okay, this is, you know, this is on point. Other times I'll just feel like, I don't feel any connection at all. And I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I've learned to just write down the information and it's always accurate. So you're not always going to get the information the same way. You know, sometimes you may feel it strongly, other times not, just keep practicing. And the more you do it, the more ways it'll come in. Like when I first started, um, I've always been pretty visual, but I didn't really feel things in my body knowingly, or um, I didn't, uh, the, the sensations weren't as strong and they weren't as easy to decipher. So the more you do it, the easier it gets. Mm, let's see. You guys can ask me, you're, you're unmuted. So you're welcome to ask me, ask me questions. Um, let's see. Because of course, when I talk, all of this went way faster than I thought. Um, there was a question about language barriers. Oh, yes, yes. So do language barriers. I, well, actually that brings up another question about time too. Um, I don't feel like language barriers exist. I feel like that wherever we go, 
we automatically know how to be in contact with the other side. And a lot of it's very symbolic. Um, I think there's just this all knowing and we, I've had people, I've worked with people and done some mediumship work. Oftentimes during the report, I will have information come in from loved ones who have passed. So the information comes from a ton of different sources. It's spirit, it's my guides, it's their, their guides, it's their loved ones, it's all kinds of stuff. Um, I will get information from them. Sometimes it's information about a health issue they had to let them know that they're there. Um, it varies, but it's not uncommon for me to say, oh, that's my, that could be my, you know, grandfather who grew up in Russia, I never knew him, or um, that sounds like, um, you know, I grew up, or my parents grew up in, um, in Vietnam, and I didn't know my grandparents, and they speak Vietnamese, and, but that sounds a lot like, you know, the pictures I've seen of them, so, so I don't think there is, um, it's sort of like, if you think about what language angels speak in, I think angels speak to everybody, so they have to know every language. They have to know how to get in touch with everyone. And I think there's a lot more of like a knowing on the other side. Um, and also time, time is a thing. A lot of you guys, when you were getting information for Lauren, you were getting things that weren't just for the present day. And that's ha that happens when I do my readings. I pick up things from childhood, from all different, times from you know people who have passed so it's definitely a different time um i think when you are doing this kind of work we're getting these kind of signals time is very relative and i don't think it really matters um so be open to whatever you get no matter what time frame it's from um so before i forget um I just want to talk a little bit about the five-part workshop, which is going to be much more um, structured than this was. This is kind of, you know, an intro to intuition and finding out what people want to know and um, stuff. But we're definitely going to get more into connecting with intuition and spirit. Um, I'm going to teach you how to use my template. So that chart I showed you, um, I'm going to send you a blank template, and I'm going to teach you how to recognize your issues and your strengths and your concerns and how to figure out which chakras they fit in and then how we can look at root causes and problem solve around those. Um, and also to help you figure out what you wanna work on first. Like somebody said, there's so many issues, where do I start? And so um, by looking at the whole chart and kind of all of the stuff you want to work on all in one place, we can talk about, you know, what's most important? Um, where do I want to start? Um, what am I most afraid of? Maybe what am I putting off? Um, so kind of when I work with people, it's very individualized and I want to teach you guys how to create individualized charts for yourselves with your own issues and um, looking at what you need to do in your own life and what I can help with to help you solve what's going on. Um, as I said, I'm gonna teach people how to do the intuitive paintings. I'm really excited about that. I've done that before. And then I will have everyone send those to me and I'll do an individualized interpretation for you of those because it would take forever to try to do it in the class and it wouldn't be fair to everyone sitting here. So that way I can you know, take some actual time on it. Um, we're going to talk about self-love and what it means to be authentic and be your true self. And a lot of people I work with, they're just like, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know what that means. And it's because they've never gotten a chance to think about it or learn about it because they've been taking care of other people, um, you know, often from the time they were very young. So it's about finding your true self little bits at a time, um, being authentic, letting go of that fear, any fear we have. Fear just holds us back so much. Um, and about being an empath, what it means to be an empath, how to set boundaries, what are boundaries? People don't even know what they are. 
you know, what does it mean to set boundaries or to need them or want them? And what do you do if the person you're setting boundaries with doesn't respect them? And, you know, how to deal with difficult people. Um, so if you are nervous about painting, Alice, you saw what the paintings look like, okay? Now, you do not have to have artistic ability to be able to make that, all right? Um, you will not be judged on your painting ability. It has nothing to do with that. Um, you don't even have to show them to the class if you want. You could just send them to me and I'll do my thing. So I'm actually a fine artist. I've had a show in New York and done all that kind of crap. Mm -hmm. When I started doing these paintings, I was like, oh my God, like how can I show them to people? This is a little weird. Um, people really love them. It's one of the most fun parts, like no pressure. It's one of the fun, most fun parts of doing the reading because what you learn about yourself comes in a non-threatening manner. It's instead of the words that you know what the words mean, you know, you know, oh God, that, that like is scary, that's whatever, because it's words. When it's symbolic, like, don't worry about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guide you through the process and stuff, but like everything means something. Everything, the colors mean something, where you place them, where you put them, um, they all have meaning and it's not right or wrong. It's just what you do for your own um, connecting to intuition in your body and stuff. Maybe a little extra help for us overthinkers and overachievers. <laughs> well, absolutely. And, you know, overthinking is really gets in the way of just connecting with intuition too. Yes. Um, you know, like that's what I'm struggling with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, we are not, we're not part of a culture that allows people to be wrong or allows them to make mistakes or allows them to be imperfect, even though we're all totally different. Yeah. And there's no such thing as right or perfect, or I don't care if you're on Instagram, all those people are, they morph their bodies with programs, you know? Um, so I love when people are different and I celebrate that and it's really important. And I haven't learned from the times that I have done everything right. <laughs> Not that there's been many of those times. Um, I've learned from the times that I've allowed myself to make mistakes and be wrong and to go through pain um, because from that I learned like I'm a lot stronger than I thought. I can handle a lot more than I thought. Um, you know, when I was getting better from the bulimia, I thought I can't, I can't show who I truly am to anybody. Like no one's going to love me. No one's going to want to be with me. No one's like, so I didn't even know what that meant. And there's a lot of people like that who are used to putting on a face for other people. So they don't even know who they are. Yes. You know, but we also make it complicated. We overthink it. So who you are, actually, let's do a little, little exercise. Um, who we are is made up of thousands of things, right? I'd like to give you five minutes or so um, to make a list of anything about you you can think of. So what is your favorite color? Um, what colors do you hate? What food do you like? Um, what color are your eyes? Like any little thing that comes to mind. And this is a list that I want you to hold on to. You can rephrase it, but hold on to and add to it. So this is the beginning. Um, some of you may already have a you know better idea than others, but this is the beginning of figure out who you are, who is the authentic, Leslie or Monica or Ashley or, you know, who you are. And it can change. It will change over time as we grow. And that's okay too. You know, there could be things like you revisit the list in a year. You're like, yeah, that doesn't apply anymore. But I'm going to give you five minutes and just kind of write some stuff down. Okay, you guys about ready? Um, so was everybody able to write down at least a few things? Did anybody not, did anybody have trouble with this? I'll take that as a no. 
what did it, what did, would anyone like to share what it felt like to, so it was hard, okay. Um, would anyone like to share what it felt like to write things about your, yourself? Was it harder than you thought you started to cry? Okay, so who's Nancy? Nancy is somewhere. Um, oh, there you are, okay, hello. So that brought up a lot of emotion in you. Um, without putting you on the spot, um, do you wanna share a little bit about why you think that was? Um, I've got a lot of trauma in my past. Okay. Um, so I've, I was also the one that brought up the relatives. Because <laughs> right. you know, yeah. I, I, I'm like, are, are they still judging me? Are they still, um, so yeah, I'm still, I'm very emotional right now. Um, it's it's hard to love myself, um, but I know in deep inside that I'm I'm strong. Otherwise, I wouldn't have survived this long. Exactly. Um, so I, I I'm I'm constantly feeling like I'm battling inside of myself. Okay. Um, with the, the 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 part that always is feeling inadequate to the part that is strong enough to make it through all sure. the crap that was thrown at me and is still being thrown at me. And so, yeah, it was, it's, it's, I write and I'm, I'm writing from inside yet. I look at it and go, I don't necessarily believe it. Okay. Um, I love that you did it. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. You are so not alone. So many of us have been through similar situations. Um, the reason I had you just make a list of things you like, don't like things about you is I was trying to encourage you to do it without judgment. So just kind of blank, I just like the color red or I have brown hair or I, sometimes that's easier than trying to find things you like about yourself or love about yourself when you've been taught otherwise, when it's hard. Um, it's hard when other people's false beliefs or false thoughts or whatever are stuck in your head. And the confusion is that you start to think those are your words and your feelings and your thoughts. So, what I love about the intuition connection and using that as a source of self-love, the way that I thought about it was that God, spirit, whatever made me. So I wasn't able to love myself or I had all the other people's shit in my head. And, but I thought I am going to allow my source to love me. I'm going to stop being in control and stop feeling like I know what everybody else is thinking. I'm going to let this source love me and just try that. You know, um, even if it's your dog or your cat or something, but you allow something, someone else to love you unconditionally. It's little baby steps sometimes. Um, yeah, so keep, keep adding to your, to your list. Um, and if it's easier, do things that are more objective. So thank you very much for, for sharing that. Um, I don't know myself as much as I would like. You're not alone, Alice. Um, you're not alone in that. The thing is, you probably know more about yourself than you think you do. Again, why I have people make those lists because, and it's like, as you go through your day and you talk to somebody on the phone and you, you hear yourself saying, oh, I don't wanna go there for dinner. I don't like Chinese food. 
or whatever. It's another thing. It's a thing. So the more you live and allow your thoughts and allow your feelings, um, you allow yourself to be you, whatever that means. And it doesn't have to be this earth shattering thing. You know, it's all these little things make up who we are. So, um, but I was kind of fun. Oh, no problem. Um, so the, um, before we go, um, the course is based pretty much on my book, um, Heal From Within. And I will be, if you take the, um, the regular course, I'm gonna send you out quite a few handouts and things, um, material from the book. I'm gonna send you stuff on like what colors mean. Um, the, I will send you a written explanation of how to connect to intuition using that written, those written techniques. Um, the obstacles for connecting, all kinds of things. So um, that will make life a bit easier. Um, you'll have, you know, things to follow on. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to learn more about, about that you'd like to see me talk about in the class coming up? Oh, and Nancy just said, will it be offered again? I can't make it. Um, it's going to be recorded. So even if you can't come to the class, even if you can't come to every class, you'll be able to watch it right after. Um, so you can, you know, um, and for people in other time zones and stuff like that too, like we had 120 people who signed up for this free thing and I didn't expect everyone to sign on because there was all different time zones and stuff. Um, so you can watch it on the recordings afterwards. Will it be as good as being there in person? Um, so, I'm going to say yes because um, while there won't necessarily be as much of this kind of give and take, um, you can still write to me with questions. Um, you can still do a painting and you can still send it to me and I'll still interpret it for you. Um, and so it's not, you know, like hundred percent the same, um, but you'll still be able to do the exercises. You'll still get the materials, the handouts, um, you know, all that. So it'll be as close to actual participation as you can in a recording. Um, I like some work with listening to my patients. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So cool. So, um, would you guys like to know about animal communication as well? Okay. So we can definitely talk about that. Um, pets are, pets, animals are so fascinating because when I do animal readings, I learn so much about the animal, but also so much about the owners because they're so tied in. And it's really mind blowing every time I do that, like how much both, both parties, how much the owner learns about themselves and their animals. Um, so we could talk about animal communications and um, I often do them with an accompanying painting because it helps you kind of visualize the animal. So, I mean, there's so many topics that, that we can talk about. Um, and I definitely want to spend some time on healing trauma and dysfunctional relationships and dealing with difficult people. That's a big thing that we, we all have to deal with, unfortunately, most of us have to deal with, so. Um, so, anyone have any, any more questions? All right, um, then I guess we'll end it here. Um, my message, blah, blah, blah. Oh, thank you, you're very welcome. Thank you so, 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 so much for coming. Um, thank you for spending the whole time with me. I know everybody's super busy. Um, you know, I hope that this was helpful information. I know it was a little um, all over the place at times, but not too bad. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch on a lot of different things and it's kind of hard when you can't go in depth. Um, but I hope that you benefited from trying the exercises. Um, and 
I hope that you will try writing to your intuition and your body and things like that on your own. Um, and you know, let me know what you think about that when we meet again, hopefully. Um, and check out my website. There's more stuff on there that you might have questions about. Or there's, there's like sample reports that I've done so that you can see what kinds of things end up on a report, what kinds of information, um, and learn more about the chakras and, and stuff like that, and more about my backstory. Um, so, so yeah, um, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it.